I blink and then I'm suddenly making another unexpected mail video. It's like deja vu. Okay, let's get started. Lots of mail to go through today. Lots of small packages again. Let's just uh, move some of this out of the way. I don't know where I'm going to start. I'll start with some of the smaller ones. Okay. Let's go with this one first. This is 1,000 pieces of 0805 ooh, resistors and capacitors. Oh, I know what they are. These are... Oh, wow, I've got to be really careful opening this. These are caps and resistors for my Neo 7 segment displays, which I've started selling on Tindy. Okay, we've got some 1 microfarad capacitors. Is a believe it or not, that's a thousand. Wow. Okay. Apparently, and here's some 430 ohm 08 to 5 resistors. Great, because I am almost out. Okay, what is next? Quantity data nuts. I am nuts. We are all nuts. Well, there you go. Look at that. It's a little bag of M2.5 black nuts. Cool. Not much to say about those. Okay, parcel post Australia for internal use dead weight. Doesn't say what it is. It's nicely padded though. Ah, oh, finally. Nothing else than that. Finally, I have my USB voltage and amp tester. You might have all seen these before, all over eBay. This is the one with the pretty nice colorful screen. I believe it's colorful. Unfortunately, everything that I have on my Mac is USB-C. So it's a real pain <laughs> for this. I've been trying to hunt down a USB-C version and you just can't get them yet. And they're obviously adapters you can put on so it's going to be painful for me to have to go from USB-C back to USB-A, from USB-A back to USB-C again. But I haven't had one of these, and I really should. And a few people have asked me in some previous videos about how much current draw I've had on my displays, and now I'll be able to find out. Awesome. Okay, what is this one? Oh, no way. Nuts. Ah. I mean, how many nuts do I possibly need? Okay, it's not just nuts. Okay, lots of different things in all sorts of ugly colored bags. So what have we got in here? We've got... Okay, these are... They're all in 2.5. And these are 6 millimeter length screws. With Phillips head on the top. Another bag of nuts. M2.5s. These are also... Hmm... 6mm Phillips head. They must have split them into two different bags. I don't remember how many I ordered. And these are 20mm M2.5. And these ones have got Allen key heads. Because I just couldn't find any with Phillips. That's a really ratty, ugly bag. Wow. Okay. Surveyor all for my display panels and projects. Anything that I need to put together acrylic with. Okay. Wow, that's a uh, interesting one. Quite a hard box inside. I wonder what that is. XBBBO sounds like something from Star Wars. Okay, what is this? Ah, awesome! So these are two little Bluetooth modules. These are the HC10s. So in a previous unexpected mail, I opened up my HC05s. These are a newer version of them. They believe they're pin-pin compatible. Yes, they are. So the reason I bought these was the HC05s I was using in a project and I couldn't get them to communicate together properly. And every time I tried to go into AT command mode on either, either one of them to configure up master and slave and set the speeds, I just couldn't get it working. Turns out 
I couldn't do it with the Arduino Nano compatibles that I had, but if I did it on my Arduino Uno, it worked fine. So after all of the, the stress, I mean, literally spent five, six hours on it, couldn't work it out, so I just ordered these. And these actually were not cheap. I bought them locally, and they still took a while to get here. These were $15 for two. I bought these because I was hoping that maybe there was just a problem with my HC05s and that the newer models might work better, but then of course I got it working with the Uno. So I now have two spare Bluetooth modules and they're the newer versions, which is cool. Okay, this is, oh, I know what this is. I can feel what this is. Adapter LED, which is exactly not what it is. Oh, with a nice big hole in the bag. <laughs> what was the point? Okay, well. And what are these? Are these extras? These are SK6812B LEDs. And what color are they? Let's find out, shall we? Let's take these. If I can. Okay, these are the black LEDs. 5050 size. I wonder what these are. So this should be a thousand. Oh, is that where these were? I wondered where the package was. These are, wow. Glad wrap for packaging. Yay. These are more. 3535 size, so they're white. I can't remember how many of those I ordered. Oh, could be 50, I'm not sure, and these should be black. So yes, these are for my Neo 7 segments. I'm almost out of all my original parts. So these are black. So they're 3535 black and white, and 5050 in black. Just leave them there for now because I have another package and this should be my white ones. Awesome. Now I went with the same supplier again as my first batch. They're a little bit more expensive than I can get them for through AliExpress. These are actually bought through eBay. But I did that because they're 100% reliable. So I was telling Brian Locke this morning like that, when he suggested that I try to find them cheaper if I could, that I, my first batch that I ordered, I actually wasted a couple hundred dollars on two reels because I bought cheap ones and they didn't work. They, each individual LED worked fine when I, I built a little tester jig, but when I put them on a board, uh, every fourth or fifth LED failed. And I went through a lot of busted boards and basically had to chuck a whole lot of LEDs out. So when I found reliable parts, I'm just sticking to them now. They're not that much more expensive per LED, but it's enough that it makes a difference when you've got 29 of them on a board. But I, I wanna guarantee that the boards work all the time. So 505 white LEDs. Lots of stock now between those and my caps and resistors. I've got, yeah, a full set of everything I need to make lots of boards. Okay, final box. Bet you can't guess where that's from. Yes, I did a small order from Adafruit. Because there were two things I wanted. One of them was a part that they had that I couldn't source that exact part quickly from anywhere and I wanted it quick because it my oh, wow I'm really having trouble opening this because my new ESP32 dev board that I'm building relies on them and the other thing that I ordered from them was only something that they supply so let's have a look at what they all are let's start off with this is what I ordered that I need for my development boards. These are 2.1 millimeter power jacks. Whoops. 
and they're board friendly. They're actually even breadboard friendly. I believe you can plug that into a breadboard. I'm not sure, but they're definitely PCB friendly and they're really compact. So I found some on DigiKey that were about 30% bigger in size. But what I want is a power jack connector. Let me just lean over the camera. I apologize that if you look at my little nightlight project that some of you may have seen, I want something that'll actually fit height wise inside a space kind of like this. So even if it was padded out a bit more, my, my intention is to make this a little bit thicker that I could actually have a, a power plug inside there that was small enough to fit. And that's what these are. And the only place I could find them without having to order some obscure thing from China was on Adafruit's website. And they're about a, a dollar each and that's fine. I bought 10, I've got a few now that I can test with. And if they work okay and if I ever go into mass production of my projects, I can try to source them from somewhere else. But I've got enough now to keep me going for a while. What else have we got? We've got two more servos. These are like the servos that I opened in a previous unexpected mail. Um, I needed four matching servos for a project I'm working on. So they're the other two. I've got a charge board. So sort of like a let me just open this up, it's pretty cool. So it's a power board and a charge board in one. It's got USB power coming in, LiPo, and then you can feed off there to, to power your projects. So it's just a nice way of having external power with battery support and charging for a small microcontroller board that doesn't have any battery charging on it. So I got one of those. And the star of the show is, I took, Missed out the first time and had to wait for them to come back in stock. I got myself a little M0 Itsy Bitsy. This is the new board that Adafruit have shipped. It is a tiny microcontroller. It's using its M0, Cortex M0 chip on it, but it has got so many pins broken out compared to the M0 Trinket, which I believe has five GPIOs on it. This is just like, for the size of the board, that is just crazy. So I like buying at least one of all their little boards like this. This board can run CircuitPython or C, Arduino IDE compatible, and it has just got a mass of hardware on there. So that is my haul. That is all my mail. It was a fairly quick one to go through today, which is great. I'm looking forward to playing with some of these things, but um, for now I need to get stuck back into building Neo 7 segment display kits. Please uh, share, like, and don't forget to subscribe and click that little alarm bell to know when I'm releasing new videos. Until next time, catch you later. Bye.